Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years stop coming and they don't stop coming. Fed to the rules and I hit the ground running. Didn't make sense, got to live for fun. Your brain gets smart, but your head gets dumb. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back street? You never know if you don't go. You never shine if you don't glow. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get your show on, get the hey. All that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars break the mold. Place, and they say it gets colder. You're bundled up now, wait till you get older. But the media men beg to differ, judging by the hole in the satellite picture. Nice sweet snake, it's getting pretty thin. The water's getting warm, so you might as well swim. The world's on fire, how about yours? That's the way I like it, and I never get bored. Thank you. 
breath. I could use a little fuel myself, and we could all use a little. Just to do so much to see, so what's wrong with taking the back seat? You never know if you don't go. Never shine if you don't blow. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get your show on, get paid. I know this morning's sermon is not on Shrek, uh, but we are so glad that you're here at the Catalyst community with us. If you are a guest, welcome. We sometimes say we are those people at that church, but this morning is completely different, even for folks who like to do things different on a weekly basis. If you have not already checked in on social media, please do so. Every month, your check-ins on Facebook here at Catalyst help make a difference Last month, we were able to provide almost 4 million gallons, well, in conjunction with other churches doing this, 4 million gallons of clean drinking water for people in need. So check in, let your family and friends know where you are this month. Every 10 check-ins here at Catalyst provides a pair of shoes for a child in need. Now, as far as what you can expect this morning, it's going to be a little bit different even for us. The band's going to lead us in a complete worship set starting in just a minute. Matt's going to come and lead... Uh, Matt, how do we even describe it today? It's another sermon and another week, but this week it's about the heart of Catalyst and about how you can get involved in the game. Halftime is when we're going to have all the food after Matt speaks. So go ahead, stand up. The band's going to lead us. We're so glad you're here. Let's have a great Sunday together. <laughs> There is an ocean deeper than fear the tide is rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven. Crushing over us, the tide is rising, rising.
turn up. <laughs> You have 
And I'm set on you. And you meet me here today. Your mercies that are new. All oh, my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay alone. I am here with you. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All oh, my fears and doubts, they can all come to. Because they can't stay alone when I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are. New horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today. Mercies that are new because they can't stay long. When I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. Aren't you guys glad to be here this morning? Come on, give the Lord a hand this morning. We're glad to be here. Let me pray over us, Father. I pray this morning you bless it. I pray you speak to our hearts. God, I pray you do wonderful things that would impact the kingdom for forever and ever and ever. And I pray it all in Jesus' name and all God's kids said, amen. Y'all have a seat, guys. We believe in uh, community here. Everybody say the word community. And so part of that means we live together. I put a post up on Facebook the other day. It said, if you believe in community, you need to have uh, be open for awkward conversations with people. Uh, and somebody actually tagged me back that they claimed that they were that person, Catherine Watson. So I don't know why you said that, but um, one thing we do want to celebrate this morning, we believe in living life together. Show that picture for me, Levi, if you would. We got some folks, maybe next slide, I think. We got some folks that, uh, isn't that precious? It's just pre- I'll say, oh, he's so dreamy. Paging Dr. McDreamy. Okay. And uh, you'll be a doctor one day, so that'll be your, your call name. So all that to be said, uh, Jeremiah and Elizabeth actually met kind of through what God was doing here at the church. And so they asked, and I, I believe this so hardly, won't you guys come have a seat on the holy subwoofers? It's Thomas thinks they're holy. He loves them. And we're going to pray a blessing over these guys as they get started in their uh, engagement and then eventually to be married. So anybody want to come up and pray with us? You can. Moms, dads, neighbors. I'm going to sit on the Holy Center main speaker. If you're new here, we're not going to bring you up and pray for you today, I promise. We know these guys. So, Father God, thank you so much for these friends. Lord, thank you that they love you first. And because of that, they found each other through you. And that's the way it should work. And so, God, I pray they've never, ever lose that focus. God, I pray you'd always bless them. I pray they would have uh, a engagement and a marriage that would reflect you, that would reflect the church, the way Jesus died for his bride. God, I pray you'd give uh, them blessings. I pray you'd get much glory through their relationship, through their lives, through their hearts. God, I pray that they would be, God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's going to bind their hearts together. Lord, we look forward to wonderful things coming out of this marriage. And we pray blessings on them in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We're here this morning. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. Um, we're doing things differently. We're, we're kind of gearing things up in, in like a football game. So that was first quarter was the band. Did a great job. Give them a hand if you would. They are, uh, we obviously have a lot of talented musicians. But what we're doing this morning, so I want to give you a, an overview of the whole game. So first quarter was uh, the band playing. I'm going to speak for just a few minutes, not as long as normally. You don't, don't clap for that. But um, woo! If, if y'all would start doing what I say, I wouldn't have to talk so long. So, just kidding. Um, 
but not really. So, um, and I, you know, I about called you all pagans. I'm just kidding. You're not pagans. So, some of y'all still are. And I'm kidding. You're not. Um, but what we're going to do this morning is we're going to do, uh, in a minute, we're going to have the part of the lobby here. We're going to have some food during halftime. It's kind of the halftime idea. And then when, grab your food. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, give Christy Curry a hand, uh, by the way. She put this together this morning. Um, we think either a tree fell on a line out front or lightning may have hit the building. We don't have power in the kitchen back here. We always prepare our food. So uh, there's been all kinds of desperate things done to get stuff heated up. If something's not exactly as you would like it, bite your lip and be quiet because uh, we're doing our best. But I think it's going to be awesome. So, um, so third quarter, you're going to come back to your tables wherever you're sitting. We've got a survey for you. And it's the idea. Here's what our goal is. How many of y'all think it's been fun this morning so far? If you somehow like uh, the vote is still out for you. Um, in Montgomery, there have been studies done that say within 10 miles where you're sitting, maybe 12, there's 100,000 people that aren't churched. 100,000. How many of you grew up in a small town? In my mind, everything is in the equivalent of enterprises. That is four enterprises. And I love the people of enterprise. And so what we believe is that, that God uses connection to get people involved, to get people finding out who friends are, to find out how they can serve, how they can be better. And so that's called service. So as a church, we ask you to do a lot of things. We ask you to to, to, to attend. Uh, We ask you to invite, to look at somebody and say, I'd love for you to be my guest at church. We ask you to give. We're going to be talking more about numbers later, but you may not know this, but it it costs like $8,000, $8,500 a month to do the things that we do. You're like, whoa, and that's, and that's actually really, really lean. If you look at how we're doing money and budgets and things, and, and some months we don't have that, truthfully. And the Lord always provides. If you're not giving, we want to encourage you. We're not here for your money. If you think it's give to another church, we believe that. Like God, God will bless whatever, take care of us, but we want you to be obedient. But the other thing we ask you to do is we ask you to serve. And so our goal today is to help you find out ways to serve. So Third quarter, after you've got your food or your bellies are full, you're going to have a chance to fill out a survey and be honest. It's, it's an idea of who you are, what you're passionate about, um, some connection points for you via social media. But also gives a chance for you to say, hey, I'm interested in, in helping on this certain team. And so we're going to have fourth quarter is going to be where you're going to have a chance to go to the team that you're most passionate about. And I'll encourage you this. If you're serving in an area already, go to another team. Stay in that team and work. But for instance, you may say, you know what, I, I play in the band or I sing or I help with preschool or children once a month. If, if that's the case, then find a day you're not doing anything. Come be a greeter. We need to have a lot of greeters. If you're, if you're like mean and rude, don't be a greeter. But the rest of y'all, you know who you are. But the rest of you come, we need, we need people to stand at the door and say, hey, welcome to Kylos. We're so glad you're here. It's not hard to do. If you don't smile, we may teach you to smile. But, but we, we need people in all kinds of teams. And the idea is that we believe there are loads, and I want you to agree with this, we believe there are thousands of people that need to be here. You agree with that? Wholeheartedly. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, our church, and this is amazing, will be five years old in October. Isn't that crazy to think? And in a lot of ways, I think we're kind of just getting started. Look, Brandon and I have had these discussions, like kind of there's, like there's like a new, fresh thing that God's doing. And I believe that in my whole heart, but I believe at the center of that is this idea of finding people, helping them find their gifts, their abilities, and then giving them ways to serve. So I want to share a scripture with this morning. In 1 Corinthians, uh, if you're not familiar with the, the Bible, the Bible's written in, in two major parts. It's the Old Testament and the New Testament. It basically means the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Testament is a foreshadowing, painting, all, a, a picture all the way pointing to Jesus. Everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus that's going to come. Even in Genesis 1, there's pictures of Jesus. It's all the way through the Old Testament. And, and the New Testament is the story of when Christ came. You've got the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, about how Christ lived, the things he did, the sacrifices he made. And then the rest of the, of the New Testament is, is looking back on what Christ did and helping develop the church. And so Corinthians is this book about where Paul had gone into a church in Corinth and it set it up, and he's writing the back instructions of how it should function. It's like an owner's manual for them. And there's a version of the Bible, it's a paraphrase called the message, and it's real, it's real on the level, modern day uh, language. And so I want to read you some verses because it really fits today. It says this, 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 4, it says, God's various gifts, this is talking about spiritual gifts, are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. When you became a Christian, if you are a Christian today, at that moment of your salvation, God put some unique spiritual things inside of you. It's wonderful. It's these gifts by the Spirit. It says God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself 
is behind it all. So we're talking this morning about helping you find out some things that you can do to serve, to let God's power come through you. Each person is giving something to do that shows who God is. That's what all these teams are about, that you're sitting at tables. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and all kinds of people. So I want to give you some benefits. We're going to go fast through them today. I'm going to email you and then put on Facebook. So don't worry about writing these down, but just listen. I want to to tell you the benefits of serving. Because serving involves you saying, I'm willing to do something that's not typical. I'm willing to get outside of myself. I'm going to give you some benefits. Number one, serving allows us to discover and develop your spiritual gifts. Now, if you called me and if I was a brand new believer and you said, Matt, come, come help with preschool. That is not my gift. And if you've ever seen me with a kid, like I had a little kid one time Asked me, he was a, like a six-year-old. He said, can you explain the Trinity? And I'm like, his parents like threw him to me. And I tried, he cried. Like I made a kid cry to my God. Like that is not my thing. But there's some of you like inside of you is this desire to, to develop this gift to help little kids. And you need, you'll be your very best when you are using that gift. So the first thing is to discover and develop your gifts. Number two, it helps you receive joy. How many guys like being happy? Joy trumps happiness. Okay, joy is this idea that no matter what happens to me, I know who holds me. No matter what is thrown my way, I know who is in control. And I find that by serving. Let me tell you this. I realized a long time ago, if I stayed as a consumer, just going to church, taking all they gave me and never giving back, that my my fountain, my faucet of joy was going to be turned off. And I realized I'm in this weird place in life. I get more joy out of seeing people do things than me doing that same thing. It's a, it's a crazy place to be in life. I love seeing the, the band. I knew a lot of these guys when they were young musicians. And I love seeing them develop their craft, find a calling, and use it. I love the fact that, that Wheeler learned to play drums off a rock band. I love that. And I love the fact that he's killer good, isn't he? And that that was a gift that God had sitting inside of him, sitting waiting for somebody to develop. And we were dumb enough to say, hey, you played that rock band pretty good. We got some drums up here, and he's like, okay. And kind of that's kind of what Thomas does, by the way. Thomas is a sneaky one, that Thomas. He's very quiet, but you gotta be careful of the quiet ones. So, so we, we want you, we believe that you'll be your very best finding something to serve. How many of y'all believe that? You'll be the very best version of you if you find a way to serve. Three, we want you to be like Jesus. Ephesians says that we need to be conformed into the image of God's Son. That means in your actions, in your speech, in the way you live, the things you do, the way you interact with people, that God wants us to look more and more like His Son, Jesus. And that we see in Scriptures that Jesus came to serve. He came to seek that which was lost. And by us serving in a very real way, when I have a friend that, that he compared a well, I won't say what he said. It's inappropriate. But he talked about preschool ministry, how tough it was. And he said that every time he did it, he was serving Jesus. Every time, every time you set up, uh, Wheeler was excited about his crock pot of cheese this morning, his queso. When you make a crock pot or you give a, a bottle of water to somebody or you stand at the door and greet somebody or you're a, a, a worker in a preschool children's ministry or if you're a student worker and you're encouraging a student, every time you do that in a very real way, you can be like Jesus. And I'll tell you this, there are plenty of ways in my life I struggle to be like Christ. But I can at least do those things, right? There are things that you're not going to be good at. You're going to struggle with your whole life. You can at least serve. And in that way, in a very tangible, measurable, observable way, you're going to be like Jesus followers. I love seeing our, the, the little friendships that pop up among these teams. People that would never be buddies otherwise, but they get on the same team. They start doing stuff together. I love the fact that every Sunday afternoon, I would have never known Matt Ward except for somebody knocked on his door and invited him to church. He came and he started serving. And every single week, Matt Ward serves. He's a hero here to me. Quiet. That serves, loves God. I love the fact that he's my friend now because he's serving. There are going to be things that you connect and connect hard. Jump in, give your life to it, and then look at your friend. We've got security team. Todd Watts is heading our security team. My goal in the next month is to meet a bunch of policemen legally. I'm not going to go take in the Mustang and go up 120 up and down the interstate waiting for them, but find a way to look at people and say this. Hey, if you don't have a place to serve, listen, if we help people find a way to serve, God will take care of that. We believe that. We believe that God will, will move hearts and change hearts and bring people in, but we've got a very easy connection point that's through these teams. Number five, serving remi- helps us be reminded that it's not all about us. How many of you would say deep down you have some selfish tendencies? The rest of you are just liars. No, we all have them. It, it is not a surprise that we like things to be our way. We like to do things the way we want them done. So here's, here's what we've got to figure out. We've got to figure out ways 
to do things that make it not about us. Chuck and I and some others have been to a, a leprosy colony in India. One of the kids on the trip called it leprosy camp. I'm like, what a horrible camp. What'd you do this summer? I went to leprosy camp. No, it's not camp. It's colony. And leprosy is this totally eradicated disease if you have antibiotics. India is this crazy weird country. It's third world and they have nuclear weapons. That should make you sleep great at night. Okay. And they have all these people who have, they've had leprosy that is totally curable with antibiotics and different treatments, and they don't treat them. They have, they have medicine sitting in warehouses. And you go there, and there are these people who literally, parts of their fingers and toes and limbs have rotted off their bodies. And they look at you, and they're Christians, and, and they say the little Indian version of, God bless you. And you're like, I'm a heel. And you carry in bags of rice. It's not fancy rice. It's not like seasoned rice, or it's just white plain, bland rice, and you bring it in and you drop this 50-pound bag and it's like the best gift they've ever received. And I'll tell you this, every time I go in those environments, when I was in Cuba last year or two years ago, it was a really good reminder to me that my life is not about me. And we ask you to serve and you're going to go, I'm tired, it's not about you. Well, I'm busy, it's not about you. It, we we got to get to the point point. we go, you know what, this service can help bring people in here. If you're helping in preschool or children or students, there may be a parent on the other end of that at their wit's end. When they bring a child up here and they're going, I need an hour. Any of you mamas that stay at home with babies that are little need an hour sometimes? Remember how that would have been? When Mary and Michael Crome were here, they're down in Florida. I remember I'd see her walk in. I'm like, this poor lady, she's just babies all over the place wearing her out. And she'd come in, and if it was her week, she'd go serve with a smile next door. It was wonderful. She got it that it's not all about us. Number six, when you serve, it increases your faith. When you serve, you're going to see things. You're going to see God do things beyond you that, that, that weren't even part of, of what you thought you could do. You're going to see God do tremendous things. This whole church, you're sitting in a testament of some people that believe that God could do something. I, I have a belief that there will be thousands of us sitting here. I do. I, I, in my mind, I have a plan of how we need three or four services. I've written down in my, in my laptop. You're like, well, that's crazy. I believe that. I believe that there are people that need to be here. I believe that there'll be, when we're going to have one of our biggest teams ever is going to be our baptistry team. They're going to need people that are going to, every single week, we're going to have to have people getting baptized. We're going to have to have a spare baptistry in case we break this one from all the usage. I'd love to have a surgeon on speed dial. I got another person whose shoulders jacked up from all the baptizing. We need a physical therapist. Hannah, can you help all the people whose shoulders are worn out from all the baptizing? We need, we need therapy. So if you're on the baptism team, you've broken your heart yourself, Hannah will take care of you, get somebody else help. You heal up in six weeks. I'd love that. I'd love to see the fact that the that harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We're calling today, we're asking for people to be workers. And the last thing is that serving allows us to experience God in greater and more significant ways. You're, you're gonna, and that's that joy thing. You're gonna find a certain level of happiness. I love listening to the band. I love being here. And, and when other people preach, love hearing that but there's a certain level of joy and satisfaction that you're only going to get if you get in this thing. You're just not. And so I would say this, be selfish and serve. If you want to be the best version of you, if you want to be truly happy, find a team, make it the best team it can be, make it a way to reach other people, make it a spot where people can come in and hear about the gospel. See, at the root of all that we do, we believe there's this message that says that God who is holy and perfect and lovely and beautiful died for that which is not. That Jesus died in the place of all of us when we were sinners. He didn't wait for us to clean up. He came after us while we were still dirty. And he died for us and he brought us in and he gave us faith to believe in him. He gave us courage to believe the the promises of scripture. And he says, I'll I'll take your life and you can take mine. That God treated Christ as if he lived our life and he treated us as if we'd lived the life of Christ. And all it is is you saying, I want to receive that. We believe that 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 message needs to be heard and proclaimed and echoed thousands of times in Montgomery and the River Region. And part of the way we do that is through these teams. So here's what we're going to do this morning. I want to remind you of one truth, and I want to to give you some opportunities we're going to pray. Uh, Everything we do is this. We do everything we do so that catalysts exist, so that people that are far from God can find life and liberty in Jesus. Now here, the point of this sentence, a lot of them don't know they're far from God. And that's the challenge. If somebody knows they're far from God or they're broken or their life's falling apart, they're a little easier. But sometimes people are far from God and they've got a nice home or a nice job or a nice car or a bank account with multiple commas in it, and they don't know they're far from God. So we've got to create ways to help them find a connection point 
Maybe they don't even come in for the right reasons, but they're here and they're hearing the gospel and they're seeing the gospel and they're seeing this idea of community lived out. I want to overview our teams. When I call out a team, I'm going to give you a little description of what they do. Team leader, if I miss it, this isn't like a definite, it's just a, a little sketch. Our administrative team is led by Ms. Catherine Watts. Catherine, raise your hand, please. Give her a hand. This team is going to provide kind of administrative back service for all the other teams. A lot of us that lead are not administrative people. They're going to help kind of give oversight, help see how things can be structured. They're also going to kind of cross train so that if a, if a team has somebody missing, that they can help in and step in. So if you're involved, if you like that in a minute, we're going to have you go there. Our band set up. Jarrell, where are you at? Is Jarrell in here? He's out. He's out working out there. Jarrell, a lot of times comes in Saturday afternoon. There's, hey, Jarrell, wave from the lobby, okay? There's Jarrell. Yeah, Jarrell. Woo! He's running laps. Uh, all this stuff, Trinity does not call us work. And for five years, we've had people who have faithfully come in on Saturday, and it's not fun. There's not a lot of people, and they open up the door, and it's one or two people. And we need, them, we need some help for them. Do y'all agree with that? We need some help for them. We need some people who say, it's not convenient because it's Saturday, and it's like, that's my day. It's not. Let's do something. Show up here. You don't have to be fancy or technical. We also have a big events team. Christy Curry, where are you at? This is not this is not a weekly team. This is a we have a big like our our five year birthday party is in October. We'll do something then. We have a big turkey fry every Thanksgiving. We have a big Easter thing. We do a lot of stuff at Christmas time. It's those big events. And and some of you are already doing this. So make it official today. If you're on that team, go by, sign up on your form. Our communication team, Philip Cameron, where are you at? Philip's behind a camera, probably. This is all things yeah, give him a hand, that's fine. All things website. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, all the ways that we can communicate. There's a weekly email that we send as a church. We desperately need some people who like to journal and write and are good with the words. We need that. And if that's you, we need you to let us know that you like those things. And we want to, one of the things we want to do is we want to have a, we want to just flood social media about what God's doing through Catalyst. We want to flood it because it means people are excited what God's doing. I want us to take pictures and videos and comments and quotes and I want the world to see. I would love for us to grow this church to be this huge thing that God's doing and it not be based on dropping money into a, an ad campaign. Wouldn't that be wonderful? What if it was just viral? What if 150 people showed up next week because we, we were faithful on social media this week? Think about that. Think of all the connections you have. I have 3,000 plus people that I know on Facebook, not even counting LinkedIn. Think, think if we used all the connections we have and we were able to say, you know what, we just want God to use even that part of my life and that's one of the things Philip's going to do. Blair heads up our community group leaders team. This is not if you want to be in a community group, but if you're willing to lead a group. We need more groups. Do y'all agree with that? That's a stop point for us. We need, we need more people who will say, I got a den and some chairs. Well, I got a Starbucks I can go to for free. Buy something. Don't be that guy. But we need more. So if you're interested in that, uh, Robert Brown's going to lead up our greeter team. Robert, give us a hand. Robert's awesome guy. Robert is the perfect person. Robert's the friendliest person that I know. And we need people that will stand at those doors and open a door. And if it's raining, walk outside with an umbrella. Or if a mom's coming in with a, with a baby and a, and a baby carrier to help those things. Because people will go back to something they feel welcome at. It's, it's ridiculous. If you, if you study, survey people that shop and where they're happier, they'd rather go to a store that costs more money because people are friendlier than a place that's not as friendly. Because we all want to be, felt like we're part of things. My beautiful bride is heading up our onboarding team. Jamie, we're going. Basically, we want to help people, uh, and there's some other folks helping her. Brandon's helping as well. We want people to, to come in and find next steps, like what's step one, what's step two, what's step three, what's step four, so they can come in, make sure they know the Lord. If they need to get baptized, get baptized. If they want to find out their gifts, their passions, find out how they lead, how they can be better leaders. We're going to do all those things, and that involves all of us as well. The next team is our outreach team, Ms. Lena. Y'all give Lena a hand. Lena had a way cool project last month where we gave some, some, some school supplies to kids who were needy. There's always going to be a need for us to help. Every single one of us should be on your team. Every single one of us should say, I'm willing to help because you can write a check or bring something. There's a school that's within three miles of here that burnt down last night or this weekend. We're going to do our best to level them. We don't have a lot of resources, but we can, we can do what we can. Preschool and children teams head by Ms. Jessica Jones. Jessica's back here. Big, big deal. If, if you like little kids, now there's a background check. If you're a student, there are some age limits. You have to be a certain age to do certain things. 
There's some legality we have to do, but we all need to help in serve that area because we need to, to let it be an easy entrance for people with little ones in our church. People will go to a church and stay at a church if their kids love it. That goes for preschool, children, and students. Production team is Mr. Thomas Jones. That involves sound and lights and all this setting and all the things, the words, all the, the, all the stuff that we do. Production and, uh, and communication can be real close, by the way, because they, they have a lot of overlap when they do. So Thomas and Philip can work in close. Security team is, is not Thomas Jones. It's Todd Watts. Got a little typo there. Todd, wave your hand if you would. We, uh, we want to make sure that we're safe. And so if, if, you're, if, if you're interested in that, we'll give more details what that means. But yeah, Thomas is in charge. That is, Thomas, he'd be like, please, please don't shoot us. <laughs> but would you like to play drums? Yeah. So. <laughs> Todd's a little more forceful than Thomas. But, but I'll tell you this. If, if you're a person who is, if, if that resonates with you, we need you. We, we need to have a schedule of people who, and we got some parameters, some training we want to do. We want to make sure that we are protected and that we're not surprised by anything that evil comes our way. Um, Chuck Jones, where are you at? Chuck Jones. Chuck is, uh, is heading up our student ministry team. Chuck and Kyle are working kind of hand-to-hand on that. If, if you have a heart for students, uh, we, we've got a lot of work to do in that. We've got a lot of things we want to do. Students, we, we know that y'all deserve a really phenomenal thing. And so we're praying for God to send us a full-time person. But right now, we're going to, as adults and leaders in our church, we're going to step up and help you guys have some things planned so you can invite your friends to be a part of it. And our last but not least, our worship team is led by Mr. Land- LeBrandon Tyree. <laughs> and you saw them this morning. And so here, here's, what we, here's what we need. If, if you're in, in the singing or, or if you want to be a stage team, we have a need for that. Or if you're an instrumentalist, um, we do tryouts every month or two. We had one last week and we'll have one probably next month as well. Um, so all this to be said, we want you to do something. If you're a guest here today, here's what I encourage you to do. Enjoy the rest of the service today. Fill out a survey. Go, go listen to a team. We're not asking you to sign in blood. We're not asking you to commit. We're not asking you to, to sign a covenant. But but if you don't have a place to serve, we invite you to help us. If you are a person that comes here regularly, we ask you to, to step up and step in and do more. I'll close this quote. It says, the reality is the Lord doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. God used men and women with similar doubts to change the course of history. Moses didn't think he was a leader or speaker, but God worked through Moses to bring Israel out of slavery. David was the youngest and therefore most insignificant of all of his brothers. But God worked through David to defeat a giant and eventually made him a king. Paul used to kill Christians before he met Jesus, but he went on to become one of the most highly regarded and prolific writers slash church planners in history. It doesn't matter what your excuse is. It doesn't matter how you're wired. If there's breath in your lungs, you got to serve. And I just just say that, and I I say that because I want you to be happier. I want you to find a place, because here's here's another little tidbit. If you don't serve, it gets really easy to throw rocks from the sideline. And we've seen it. And I've said this since day one at our church. And I've seen people who stiff-armed us and would not want to get involved. And we tried and tried. And then something happens and they ruffle their feathers. And we're all going to ruffle each other's feathers. We're going to. Because it's called community. Either that or we're all liars. And we're not going to be liars. So we're going to run in each other. We're going we're to we're scratch paint on each other. We're going to bump fenders. And if we, don't, if we don't know what the overall goal is, you can offend me. And I'm not leaving because the overall goal of reaching people is way more important than your offense. Your rudeness does not trump the call to do what we've got to do here. So I want you to be the very best version of you. And so we invite you to find ways to serve. I'll summarize again. Blazer going to come up and give some announcements. We're going to take an offering. If you want to give today, that'd be awesome. Then he's going to say a blessing. We're going to go eat. Bring your food back. Come to a table. After a few minutes, we're going to pass out some surveys. You can sit anywhere and fill the survey out. Go meet somebody new if you don't know somebody. We're going to fill out these surveys. That'll be quarter three. Ten minutes or so after that, we're going to go to quarter four, and that's where we're going to ask you to go to the primary team on your sheet. There are team leaders who know what's going to go, and they're going to kind of walk you through a process. Okay? Blair, come on up. Let me pray for us, and he'll give some analysis. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for the opportunity, the invitation to be part of your church. Lord, I pray that we would make much of you. I want to pray you'd bless this food in a few minutes as we eat. And God, I pray you would just help us to reach more people than we've ever thought we could. Uh, people that do not have a connection, people that don't have a church home, people that are lost and don't even know they're lost. And God, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Matt mentioned earlier, um, it costs money to do what we do. Things come up. Uh, you know, we were blessed when 
when we started several months into the, the life of Catalyst with the uh, birth of the big yellow truck. Uh, we didn't have any money invested into Bertha. Well, right now we do because I refuse to keep driving it without brakes. Um, it's, call me crazy. Um, think, things come up. And, uh, you know, it, it runs, like Matt said, $8,000, $8,500. And the reason we've been able to do this for, for five years is because of your faithful giving. 10% of every dollar that comes in before a salary is paid, before rent is paid, any other bill is paid, 10% off the top goes to support missions right now through the, the orphans' hands. And we're so, so happy to be able to partner with the Camerons and what they're doing there. To date, it's been uh, more than this at this point, but, but running close to $28,000 because of your faithful giving. Uh, if you want to support financially, the guys are fixing to pass. The, they'll come around with the buckets. We do want to make it easy for you. If you got a handout, there's an envelope in there that you can, uh, that the first time you do it, you'll get a link sent back to you. This is not like helping Haiti through Verizon or AT&T. Um, you're not going to get, you know, hit on your bill for your cell phone. This is actually uh, a separate service. You'll get a link sent back so that you can set that up. Um, Matt shared how things are going to go. I do want to mention community groups again. If you've not gotten plugged into one, we believe that's where life change happens. As much as we love what we do on Sunday mornings, we, we also know that, that true change, uh, changes happen not in, in rows like we typically have, but circles like you're sitting in right now. So see me this morning before you leave, and maybe I can connect you with one. Let me say a blessing uh, for our food that's in the back. Uh, Y'all get up and fix your plates after we're through praying. Come back and sit down, and uh, Matt will be back with us in just a, a few minutes to get us started on the third quarter. Father God, thank you for the privilege of being able to be here this morning. Father, thank you. Uh, that, that lightning only affected part of the building and that we had people willing to work and walk and, and heat things up in other parts of the building. Thank you for all the hands that have, have worked to prepare food for us today. Lord, bless us now. Bless this time together. and Let us all leave this place today encouraged. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Y'all go dig in.